Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning as we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. And also in our nation, we celebrate Memorial Day, uh, of course, officially tomorrow, but this is Memorial Day weekend. I ask that you turn to page 94 in the front of your worship book as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the order of confession and forgiveness. Page 94 in the front of your worship book invite those who can without difficulty to please stay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, flood the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us now begin our worship with God bless our native land, hymn number 891, in the back of your worship. In number 891.
Almighty and ever living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children, and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for doing good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sin once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved from water, and baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience, through resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and the powers made subject to him, the word of the Lord. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. This is May 25th, 2014.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In April 1863, down in Columbus, Mississippi, a woman that decorated, or mother decorated the graves of her sons who had died fighting for the beloved South. And once she had decorated those graves, she began to walk towards two freshly dug graves in the far end of the cemetery. And as she journeyed toward those two fresh mounds, some of her friends howled out to her, What are you doing? Those are Yankee graves. Why are you going there? She said, I know they're Yankee graves. And I know that somewhere up home, there is a mother, possibly a young wife, possibly some children, who mourn for them the way we mourn for ours. After the war between the states, it became so common for people north and south to decorate the graves of those who had fallen in battle that finally, in 1868, it was declared that May 30th, would be Decoration Day, a national day to remember all those who had fought in that great struggle, the worst war our nation has ever been involved in. And then as our nation continued to be involved in wars, it then changed from just being a day to decorate the graves of those who had fought in the war between the states, but it became a time to decorate the graves of those who had fallen in the other wars, the Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, and so forth, all the way up to the day with the Iraq Desert Storm and Afghanistan. And so Memorial Day became our national, if you will, All Saints Day, where in the church, November the 1st, we celebrate All Saints Day. We remember all those who've gone before us in the faith and those who have passed on since the last celebration of All Saints Day. We mention their names in the prayer of remembrance. Well, Memorial Day weekend was set up to be that All Saints Day for the nation, where the whole nation, whether Protestant or Catholic, Jewish or whatever, would take that time to remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice. So that we might be free. As the years have gone by and the Memorial Day was, observance was changed from May 30th to the fourth Monday in May in order to provide for a long weekend, the day has lost some of that history of being a day to honor the military who have died, and it's basically become a day for people to go and decorate the graves of any other family members who have passed away. When I was pastor of Hopeful Lutheran Church in Florence, Kentucky, we had a church cemetery. And every Memorial Day weekend, myself and the cemetery board would have shifts in the cemetery to direct people to the graves so that they could decorate them. And uh, at my Monday at 5 o'clock, when basically the celebration was over, the entire cemetery was bathed in all these beautiful colors of flowers. And all the military people had flags at their headstones. And so as we gather together on this Memorial Day weekend, on this Sunday, we take time to remember those who made that ultimate sacrifice to keep us free. And we also realize that whenever someone loses their life in defense of our country, like the woman in Columbus, Mississippi said, there is a mother possibly a spouse, possibly children, mourning that loss. Feeling abandoned and alone as that person whom they love has now been taken from. But if you mourn the loss of someone you love, whether it was they were lost in battle or that they were called home due to illness, old age or an accident or whatever the reason. And if you feel abandoned and alone, let me direct you back to our gospel reading for today. Taking you back to that 14th chapter of the gospel according to St. John to that 18th verse where Jesus made
makes this promise to us. Quote, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. With Jesus, we are never alone. Our friends may abandon us. Our family members may abandon us. But Jesus is always there. Even if war makes you a literal physical orphan, you're never an orphan of Jesus. Jesus is always there. The word we translate as lead in our English Bibles. Greek word, which literally means to depart. It means to let someone alone. It means to disregard them. To, to, to depart from them and leave them to themselves, not in a positive way, that you're withdrawing from them so they can have time to think about it. It means you withdraw from them, leaving them in a difficult or bad position, or it means to desert someone wrong. Like when my daddy was five years old and his papa deserted him and his older brother and sister and his mother, took off and left them to fend for themselves. Well, Jesus is telling us that no matter what the world may do, no matter what society may do, no matter what your friends and family may do, He will never desert you. He will never disregard you and not consider you to be important. But to Him, you are always important. And He is filled with love for you. He will not depart from you and leave you in a difficult situation. He will not let you alone. promising us that no matter what happens in life, He is always there. He is always with us. He will always be able to be counted. No matter how a loved one is taken, Jesus is always there. Someone has said, quote, loneliness is being unaware of the one who is with us everywhere. End of quote. Think about that. This person is saying that when or if you're lonely, it's because you're unaware of the one, Jesus Christ, who is everywhere. And that's what Jesus is saying in our text for today. I will not leave you alone. You will never be lonely. You may think you're lonely. You may be in a dark place. You may be out in the middle of nowhere and you think you're lonely. But I am there with you. I am always there with you. I am always there for you to lean on. Remember back in the late 60s, early 70s, there was a popular song, you know, Lean On Me. The person, the words were that this person you could count on, the lean on them at any time of trouble. Well, unfortunately, human beings have a tendency to fail at that. Sometimes we can't be there when somebody needs it. But Jesus is always there. I will not leave you orphan. It's a promise. He seals the promise with his blood upon the cross. As we remember those today, this weekend, who gave their lives in defense of our country, gave their lives so that we might be free, let us also remember that we who mourn them are not alone. That Jesus is with us. With Jesus, we are never enough. That word that we translate as orphan, doesn't mean simply someone whose parents have perished and left them all alone. The word literally means to be deprived of someone. When you're an orphan, you're deprived of your parents. It means to be robbed of something. When you're an orphan, you're robbed of that family to raise you and that love and nurturing that a family provides. Unfortunately, oftentimes today, Orphans find themselves bounced from foster home to foster home. And they never, so they're robbed of that growing up in a loving, nurturing family. The word means to be dispossessed of a teacher, a guide, a guardian, or parents. And finally, it means to leave in a sad or lonely state. Jesus is promising you that he will never do anything. 
He will not deprive you of his love, care, concern, and comfort. He will not just rob you of his presence. He will not dispossess you of his teaching, his guidance, his being your guardian, his being your big brother, his being your parent if so needed. He will not leave you in a sad or lonely state, but fill that loneliness with his presence so that you may continue the journey of life. When we hear Jesus make this promise, we must recall the setting of these words. It is Thursday night of Holy Week, what we call Monday Thursday. The disciples of Jesus have gathered in the upper room. Jesus startles them by getting up and washing the disciples' feet, and then gives them a lesson in humility and service. He then gives them a new commandment that they are to love one another as he loves them. Then they celebrate Passover, and at the end of Passover, Jesus does take some bread, leftover bread, and a cup, and he blesses it, gives it to them, and says, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he gives, blesses a cup and gives it to them and says, This cup is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus has identified as betrayer Judas, and Judas has left to go and put into motion the betrayal of Jesus. Peter has stood up and proclaimed, he bumped his chest saying, oh, all the rest can leave, but I'll be there with you, Jesus. You can count on me, Jesus. Jesus tells him before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Jesus knows what's coming. He knows he's going to be betrayed. He knows he's going to be handed over to evil men. He knows he's going to suffer horribly. He knows he's going to undergo one of the most horrible deaths ever invented by humanity. And yet his concern is not himself, but for his disciples and for we who would be disciples after them. That we not feel orphan. That just because he dies and rises again and 40 days later ascends into heaven, we are not to feel orphan because he will be with us. He will send us that advocate, the Holy Spirit, which will remind us that Jesus' presence is always here. War can create many an orphan, and it sometimes can become difficult as to what to do with all those orphans. Some of you may remember a story I've used at Christmas time before. It's Christmas Day, 1943. A group of American GIs have finished their training and responsibilities on their base outside of London. And so being Christmas Day, they go into London to see what is going on. And as they're walking down the street, they come by a building that says St. Anne's Orphanage. So they decide to go inside. And when they walk inside, they're shocked to see there's no Christmas tree. There's no Christmas decorations. There don't seem to be any presents, but there's an awful lot of children. The supervisor comes up to them and welcomes them and explains to them how everyone of those children are orphans because of the blitz of London. The bombing of London by the Germans. None of them have any parents. They can't find any kind of family members. So they're all in this orphanage. So the GI is feeling sorry for the kids and it's Christmas Day and they don't have any presents. They begin reaching in their pockets and they pull out a stick of gum here, a coin there, some chocolate here, a pencil there, and they give them to the kids. And the kids are filled with excitement and appreciation. And one GI happens to look over and over in the corner, there's a little boy standing all by himself. And so the GI goes over to the little boy and he says, Hey, little fellow, what's wrong? The little boy looks up at him with tears streaming down his face. He says, Mister, I just want to be loved. And that has been the cry of humanity since the beginning of time. Since thrown out of paradise, the cry has been, I just want to be loved. And when we see interviews 
done with criminals? How often do we read or hear them say that when growing up, they received no love? They were kicked from house to house, relative to relative, beaten, abused. So they, all they wanted was someone to love them. But that love never came. Jesus wants to be sure that everyone knows that they were loved. Jesus wants everyone to know that there are no orphans of those who believe in him. Jesus is always with us. He's always there. Jesus is always there to be your guardian. Jesus is always there to be your teacher. Jesus is always there to be your comfort. Jesus is always there to be the rock to lean on. Jesus is always there to be the fence post to lean on. Jesus is always there to be the one who is with you through the darkest of days and the brightest of nights. Jesus is always there because he will not let you be an orphan. Because by his death, resurrection, and ascension, and his outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which you received in baptism, you are aware of Jesus' presence always with you. He refers to the Holy Spirit as advocate. The word advocate is a legal term. But it means more than a defense lawyer. Some people like to look at it and it's a, it's a defense lawyer, but it actually means much more than, than a defense lawyer. A defense lawyer, you pay to represent you, you pay to argue your cause. The idea of an advocate is one who stands beside you, one who stands with you, the one who bears what you bear. There were some missionaries trying to translate the New Testament into a, an African language. Uh, around the, one of the African countries around the equator and they couldn't find anything in that African language to describe the advocate of the Holy Spirit. Till one day they saw a hunting party go out in the jungle and a bunch of the African men from the tribe were of course following the hunters bearing all the supplies on their heads or carrying them in their arms and they noticed one man walking beside them, one member of the, of the tribe with nothing. He wouldn't carry anything. He had nothing in his hands. He was just walking. So they thought maybe, well, he was like the boss, the overseer. Make sure the fellows did what they were supposed to do and were appropriate uh, and indicated towards the hunters who had hired them. So they asked somebody in the village, they said, oh no, he's not an overseer or boss. He's there in case. <laughs> One of the men become tired and they begin to stumble and they can't carry the burden. Then he picks up that burden. He's known as the one who falls down with him. They had their word for the Holy Spirit in that language. The one who falls down with him. The one who's so tight with you that they experience everything they need. See, Jesus loves us so much. So we will not be orphan. He sends that Holy Spirit. So that that Holy Spirit goes through everything we go through on behalf of Jesus Christ. So that is why it's important that we acknowledge the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is our Savior. He gives us the Holy Spirit to know that He is always with us. That His presence is real. Again, someone has said, quote, if you have the Holy Spirit on the inside, you can stand any kind of battle on the outside. In the world. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, and you've been baptized and the Holy Spirit is in you, then what this person is saying, you can face any of the battles in life that you face. Whether it's an actual battle as a soldier on the battlefield, or whether you're facing the battle of life, the battle of stress, the battle of a job going bad, the battle of a relationship going bad, whether you're talking about the battle of of a neighbor, a neighborhood changing, whether you're talking about a battle of fighting for what you think is right, whether it's a battle of trying to continue to promote what is good and right and moral, no matter what the battle may be, Jesus Christ is there. You have the Holy Spirit on the inside. 
that enables you to face those outside battles. Jesus is with you all. Because he is your Savior. Because he will not leave you orphan. Jesus Christ, the Savior, makes peace with God. Jesus Christ, Lord of your life, gives you God's peace. Now think about that. See, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, brings peace with God. Without Jesus, there's no peace with God. As we know, sin, the wage of the sin is death. Sin separates us from God. A holy God cannot be in the presence of sin. But Jesus, by his death upon the cross, has restored that relationship with God. So he is Savior of the world. That action is done. It's completed. All you have to do is accept God's grace that comes through faith in his Son, Jesus Christ. Once you do that, now that you have peace with God, Jesus gives you God's peace. That peace that is with you in times of trouble. That peace that is with you as you mourn the loss of a loved one. That peace that comes with you when you're persecuted for the Christian faith. That peace that comes to you when you're in the darkest, dankest sail thrown in there because of your faith in Jesus. It is the peace that comes to you even in time of disappointment. It's a peace that comes to you in the time of failure. It's a peace that comes to you in the time of your gracious, best, greatest accomplishments. It is a peace that comes to you each day as you rise up in the morning and as you lie down at night. You know what I mean? Jesus will not leave you. He will not depart from you. He will not desert you. He will not lead you, leave you in a bad state. He will not let you be robbed of his guidance and his teaching. He is there with us for all times. He is at peace which passes all understanding. I have a fraternity brother who I came up with on Facebook he had a son, a pretty good baseball player. He was in high school, had a chance to play college baseball. 9-11 happened. He joined the Marines and stayed. He was killed by an ID in Iraq. Every Memorial Day weekend, my fraternity brother puts his son's picture as his identifying picture on his Facebook page. And he reminded, so the people will be reminded of the sacrifice his son made. But also to remind that it's the peace of God that comes through Jesus as Lord that enables him to face each day with that emptiness, that void created by the death of that son of his. See, that is how much Jesus loves us. That he gives us that peace which passes all understanding. That peace that comforts the martyrs and the persecuted. The peace that comforts the widow, the widower, the orphan. The peace that comforts the stranger in our lives. The peace that comforts you and me each and every day. So on this Memorial Day weekend, as we remember those who made that ultimate sacrifice in order that we might still be free. As we honor them, let us also remember that we are not alone. That Jesus never leaves us in orphan, so that we can continue our pilgrimage of life. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now sing before you, Lord, we bow hymn number 509 in the back of your worship. Hymn number 500.
confess our faith. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father <laughs> Almighty, Creator Great. of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in a conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We are glad to have you join us today. This is uh, May 25th, 2014, uh, Memorial Day weekend. St. John's is located at the corner of Columbia and Wittenberg Avenue. It is our hope and prayer that these moments will indeed be a blessing to you this day. Our telephone number is 937 323 
receive our prayers, Holy God, and give us all we need for this day and the days to come. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus told us. Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless Bless, comfort, strengthen, and keep now and forever. Amen. Clear our worship with hymn number 888. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Hymn number 888. Again, our phone number is 937-323-7508.